So wel welcome everyone, welcome back to the second session of monitoring water quality using satellite image processing webinar. Last week, we saw an overview of NASA remote sensing satellites and sensors, uh, which are useful for water quality monitoring. We had a brief review of how water quality is monitored using qualitative and quantitative methods. We also had hands-on exercise, um, specifically to look at chlorophyll concentration and sea surface temperature as HEB indicators, how they can be used for monitoring a HEB. So we looked at Giovanni and Ocean Color, these two web tools, to look at water quality parameters. And we looked at Chesapeake Bay and Lake Victoria. These were two case studies that we did. This week now, we are going to move to a software that is CDAS, which is used for image processing to derive water quality. So this software allows you to look at level two data that we downloaded from Ocean Color Web last week. And so we'll have details of this software today. We're going to have it as demonstration. Just a reminder that this is the RSET website where all the training material is available. The homework based on exercise one that you did last week, that's also available here. The link is here in Google Form. And so please do the homework online. And here's the RSET listserv, just as a reminder that you can join it to keep in touch with RSET activities. So today, we're just going to have an overview of CDAS. We'll have demonstration in which we will analyze MODIS images using CDAS. And again, we'll focus on Chesapeake Bay. Then you can repeat this exercise for Lake Victoria using CDAS. So between last week and this week, you must have downloaded and installed CDAS on your computer, as it was instructed last week. And so then you will be able to use CDAS to do image processing. We're also going to have a demonstration of downloading Landsat uh, operational land imager images or OLE images. We will do that for Lake Victoria. Next week then, we will be processing these images. These are high resolution images for Lake Victoria. How to use them and how to process them uh, that will be demonstrated next week. So today, then, what we're going to do is start with CDAS demonstration and then work with the data. So overview of CDAS, and we want to acknowledge Daniel Knowles. Um, he is the one who is developing C a part of CDAS team, developing CDAS software. And he has helped us um, in uh, answering some of the questions with CDAS. He will also be available later to answer your questions about CDAS. Here's the website where you can get a lot of information about CDAS, but you already have downloaded CDAS, so you've seen this site. It's a comprehensive software package, CDAS. It processes and displays and analyzes um, data, water quality data. You have latest version of CDAS here, that is 7.5.1. So CDAS actually was developed in collaboration with European Space Agency. Uh, their software is called BEAM, and CDAS is based on that. Some of you who may have used SNAP software, that is similar to this too. There is online documentation, download, and tutorials, which are all avail available from CDAS website. CDAS is available as a graphical user interface or GUI, as we are going to use it here. But there is also a command line version that you may use to do bulk processing. So once you go to CDAS site, you know that it you can download it there is 
configuration requirement it's available from CEDA site what else is needed so you need Java you need Python git curl etc it's available for three operating systems it's Linux Mac OS 10 and Windows you can use it on any of the platforms the original source code is in C and that is also available for installation So some of the features, they include visualization. So this GUI, if you already have data, it's great for visualizing and customizing your visualization. There is advanced layer management. There is mapping and reprojection. There are different masks, such as land, water, coastline. Uh, there is bathymetry and elevation information available. Most importantly, there are operations available, uh, mathematical and statistical, to do anal data analysis. You can plot histograms, scatter plots, and correlation plots. You can also um, get in situ data into, um, into this um, GUI, which from CBAS, that is CWIF's Bioptical Archive and Storage System, or CBAS. So you can get easy to data directly into this um, CDAS also. Here is the snapshot of the interface, and we're going to see that in uh, detail. Next feature is data processing. You can see, as shown here, uh, there is a um, ocean color science software. And this, is, this allows you to work with different sensors. So although this was built primarily for CVIF's mission, now it is it can be used for MODIS and other sensors. These features include processing level zero to level one data. Then more most importantly, it includes atmospheric correction that we talked about last week. We talked about it that to derive water quality information, you want to look at water leaving. Uh, radiances or reflectances, but what satellite measures is top of the atmosphere radiances or reflectances. So you have to subtract or correct for contribution from atmospheric gaseous molecules, clouds, and aerosol particles. So that correction is already done for MODIS and WIRS data in here. But as we will see, we can do this for Landsat. Uh, data also. So for CDAS uses, um, it, it helps analyze level two MODIS data, but for Landsat, you have to create level um, two data from level one data by using atmospheric correction, and that requires using this ocean color science software. And so that we will demonstrate. Once you do that, you can convert level one to level two data. You can bin level two data to level three, so you can have uniformly graded level three data based on level two data. And then you can map all three levels, level one, two, and three. All this is possible using CDAS. Most important is that there are many tutorials already um, available online. There are presentation slides available online. You go to material from CDAS presentation and workshops, you will see information about introduction, CDAS tools, okay? and there are walkthroughs, how to use it, step-by-step -step instruction. There are video tutorials which are extremely useful. There's installation tutorial and how to use this for analysis, to use different types of masks, to do the statistics, all these tutorials are available in here. These are on YouTube. And you have many slides available for you to view as well. Last week also we talked about this CDAS form. You can join this or you can post questions on this. There are FAQs. And you can get many answers just by looking at this forum question and answer sessions. And for different topics, then, 
you can post your own questions. If you're trying to install, use CDAS and you have specific questions, even if you get any errors, you get stuck, here's where you post your questions. And then you get answers from this uh, large user of um, users of CDAS. With that, we're going to have a demonstration of these features. Again, for this, we're going to focus on Chesapeake Bay. And then you will be able to work on this using um, MODIS data that you downloaded in exercise one using Ocean Color for Lake Victoria. So this is the demonstration of CDAS. On your computer, you must have saved CDAS, downloaded and installed uh, during last week. So on my Mac, it's in this bin directory and application folder. And you can click on this CDAS icon and it opens the software. So you can navigate to the directory you have saved CDAS and open it. Once you open this, you can see that it's version 7.5.1. This is the latest version available online. It also checks for new available software. For now, we're going to say no because we already have the latest version for now. And once you open this, you have one, two, and three panels. You can see it, this panel, main panel, is blank for now. On the bottom, you have a file manager, layer manager, mask manager, and color manager. On top, you have many features. Some of them we will be using today. And some you can explore later when you have time. On top also you have options. Um, you can look at layers, vectors, rasters, and we'll also talk about this software. So different tools and different analysis options here. Some of them are also available here as shortcut, like particularly you can go here and open the file, or you can go here and open the data file. Uh, there's something like coastline, land and water masks are there. Here there are grids you can put on the map. There are ways you can create a new raster band by applying a filter. New raster band using a logical math expression. So this is a math band. You can generate a true color image or red, green, blue band using that. You can make a true color. You can co-locate two files, crop a file using special subsample uh, raster. You can create a mosaic of multiple files. You can apply a map projection, uh, edit layer properties, uh, export color bar, and these are some of the options. Then finally, you can zoom in, you can pan, <coughs> excuse me, and you can create a new vector data container. So you can put your own shape file or you can use some of these shapes to define a file shape. You can have place mark using these pins. And then these are statistical options. You can display statistics for bands, for parameters. You can have histogram, scatter plot. You can have spectrum. There's also a way to import field measurements from CBAS, and we are going to see this next week. So these are some of the features. Uh, we will be focusing on a few, and then you can explore this at your convenience. So what I'm going to do is walk through a case study for Chesapeake Bay and then you will have time to explore some of the same features for Lake Victoria using the file that you downloaded from Ocean Color last week. So what I'm going to do is you can open a file, you go to your computer, select the directory and get the file. I have already opened this file which is Chesapeake Bay file for level 2 data on May 12th, 2018. And I'm going to open the file. When you open the file on this left-hand window, you will see the information about the file. This is the file name. And what we're interested, there's metadata information, what we're interested in the rasters available in this level 2 file. 
So this was the file again we downloaded from Ocean Color website just like you did for Lake Victoria. This is level 2. Now we also went through this list of parameters available in this site. So for example, you have a inorganic carbon or organic carbon, you have chlorophyll A concentration. Uh, these are the parameters we're going to focus on. So especially chlorophyll A concentration and these are surface reflectances in different bands. These are the bands useful for uh, water quality monitoring, especially blue to red to infrared, uh, near infrared. And there is also chlorophyll A concentration. So let's start with chlorophyll A concentration. Once you click on this raster, you will see the map. And now what we want to do is to put a map on this. First of all, you can use this mask manager. This is the easiest way to look at different masks. We're going to look at land mask. You can turn it on and then it puts the land in it. And now you can see that this is Florida. Here is Chesapeake Bay. This is the Atlantic Ocean. And you can change the color of this mask also by clicking on the color. We're going to keep it gray. And uh, we will look at a couple of more masks later, but this is the most important thing that you want. This is to give a reference. You can also put grid line on the map. So that puts you, uh, that gives you latitude and longitude lines on the map. So this is the feature we used. And you can zoom in. Just click on the zoom and do that. Or look at the left hand, right hand side panel now. Here it is showing you the swath you're looking at, the file that you downloaded, it's covering this area. And then here you have the raster. When you move your cursor or mouse on the image, you will see here latitude, longitude, and chlorophyll concentration in milligram per meter cube. So here it is say 20, here it is more like 0.4. And here also you have a navigation control. You can move around. That takes you to different areas. So you can just go here. You can zoom in here also. Or you can use features on top and you can pan the window as you like. Okay. So this is a quick way to just zoom in and look at uh, different areas. So this is the Chesapeake Bay area and what we can see now is we can see color. Here is the basic method. You can look at the table. It gives you which color is in which range. You can use a slider uh, from this. I find it easy to use this basic to begin with. You can have different palettes. Um, you can use this or you can use this blue to red. And we know that the colors are saturated here, so values are a little higher. I'm going to try with, say, 60 or even 70. And you can have, here you can have, say, 0.05. You can try different palettes if you, uh, by using different colors, you can perhaps get more gradient on your images. And so I, let's pick this. And then again, you can pan it. And when you go to a particular area, you can see this is 20.9 milligrams. Here it is more like 44. If you go here, it is 2.5. So this is a quick way of looking at uh, if you have multiple images uh, for different days, you can quickly just keep taking um, these different rasters, chlorophyll rasters in, view them one at a time, open each file, and then it provides you a visual information of how chlorophyll is changing over the bay. So this is a uh, just a simple way to visualizing level two file. On Ocean Color Web, we had a way to visualize it, but this has uh, more zoom in features, and also you can change colors and you can add different uh, coastlines. And here, if you go, <coughs> excuse me, 
you can also have a coastline you can add and you can change um, transparency of the coastline um, and you can uh, add bathymetry information also so this is these are some of the features that you can explore here's where you can add bathymetry and elevation band mask they they are available at different uh, resolution but you can use this and create a band and then it wants to install the file so you can go ahead and install this file to be able to use bathymetry and um, elevation mask so in here what we want to do next is see how we can look at other layers also <clears throat> so now we are going to see reflectances we already know that this chlorophyll A concentration is derived from uh, using a blue green band from here, bands from here. But we can also look at individual uh, image, individual um, reflect uh, wavelength reflectance in different wavelengths. So you can click on, say, blue, and here on top you can see that both are available. You can switch in between and here also you can add landmask so now what you have either you can look at two of these you can go back to file manager also include another band it's a green band and again add land mask okay now we have three bands on top or three different rasters on top there is a way to see them all at once either tile them horizontally or tile them vertically and then <clears throat> what you can do is go here and it says synchronize windows so once you synchronize, you, you see them all at once. They all move where you move this area. So they are synchronized. And so any feature you want to see in the reflectance uh, raster or in the chlorophyll raster or different bands, you can see them simultaneously. Now when you go over here, you will see on the right hand side that you have um, all three raster values so reflectances in these two bands are there per steradian and you have chlorophyll concentration all three at this pixel all three values then are provided there's also one more thing to notice here is that if you go to color mask you have a you can say no data color you can perhaps make it black and then <clears throat> all of them you can highlight no data and if you focus here on the chlorophyll data mostly either if there are clouds present or if the algorithm fails then you do not have chlorophyll data so you can see that almost everywhere uh, where you don't have data in reflectances of course you don't have chlorophyll also if you go to mask manager that is a mask you can see it says cloud eyes if you highlight that you can see here that most of this missing data are because of clouds so this is a quick way to see where you can't see surface because there are clouds present so next what we want to do is we're going to focus on starting with just chlorophyll first you can fill the window like this and then we are going to do some statistical analysis here before we do that I just wanted to quickly show that you can add um, or export this color bar 
Once you click on that, you can pick whether you want a horizontal or a vertical color bar. Do you want it inside the image or outside the image? And where do you want, whether you want it in uh, center or left? I want this left center. And here are all the values that you will get. And then you can create the layer. And then if you zoom enough, you will see that there is a bar added here for your reference. You can always go to here and look at the values here also. OK. So if you change the color bar, then you will have to add um, color bar again. But that's just to show you. Again, zoom in into Chesapeake Bay here. Now we want to do some statistical analysis. So in order to do statistics on any of the data that we have here, um, you can do either entire image that you have or you can zoom in and crop any particular area of your interest. Once you zoom in, that is the default area that you can crop to. And to do that, you can actually go to raster and crop. So either you can just crop this entire window that is visible here on which you have zoomed in, or you can also pick a small region that you want to uh, have statistics on or you want to crop to. So here I'm just going to pick a small region by geography and so you can look at latitude longitude here approximate. Uh, you can see this is minus 76.24 here it is minus 76 and you can have 37.6 this is 37.4 so you can crop to a small box if you like. This is just for an example. You can also see that it is special subset. You can also do band subset. You can pick any one or you, we are going to pick all the bands. And you can also do metadata subset. So here you can pick by geo coordinates or by pixel coordination, which also appear here. So here I'm just going to pick a small box. And then you can crop. And that uh, layer gets added here. You can turn this layer off and go to raster here. This is the crop layer. And we can go to chlorophyll A. And it just shows this small region that we picked of Chesapeake Bay. Now you can either of, of you can pick any region or you can do statistics on here. I just want to show example. You can, you can do display statistics. You can say this is the chlorophyll A concentration. And what you can do is in regional, you can say water only. Okay. And then you can run. Once you run that, you will actually get this statistics as you can see here. And so how many regional pixels are there? How many valid pixels are there? Uh, mean value in um, milligram per meter cube. So this is 27.45. Standard deviation and variance are given here. Coefficient, coefficient of variation. Um, and uh, bean information is given here. So you have minimum and maximum you have percentile threshold of chlorophyll concentration and so this is you can see or for a given region the stat statistics that you can get for this region by using this statistical analysis you can do histogram and then you can refresh it to get the histogram here is chlorophyll um, values and then here frequencies you can see that here is where a peak is between about 15 to 30 uh, milligram per meter cube as we knew 27 was the mean so this shows a histogram of chlorophyll concentration in this area 
So it's really useful if you have multiple images for different days, then you can quickly compare how the histograms is shifting, how the statistics are changing, how visually you see the image, where the region where you have chlorophyll concentration is changing with days. So this is a quick way of looking at statistics. Now further, we want to mathematical analysis of some of these data. So since we have this reflectance data, we can uh, try and use this information if suppose you have an image where you have reflectances, but if you do not have chlorophyll A concentration, but you do have say ocean color algorithm or coefficient derived from previous data, then you can use that to derive chlorophyll A concentration. Just example is shown here to do band mathematics. And so for that, uh, we're going to say let's pick the original image. This is the original image that we had, not the cropped one. So this is the entire image. And now what we can do is do band math. We can go to this raster, math band option. Here is the original image that we have. This is the level 2 ocean color chlorophyllic concentration modus for 12th May 2018. You can name this and I'm going to say band ratio because that is what we're trying to calculate. And you can go to edit expression. Here you have all the data sources from this particular uh, raster. Uh, then you can have different constants here. You can have different operations. And you have different functions. What we're trying to do is take log 10 of blue-green band ratios, which is used by chlorophyll A concentration algorithm. So I'm going to pick that. And now this is the, here is where we take ratio. So we can say ratio of two bands. This particular one would be blue. And this one would be green. And when you say OK and OK, you will get a new raster here for band ratio. You can go back and add the landmass to it. You can also pick a particular color. And now you have band ratio. When you go here, here you will see band ratio values. This is log 10 of band ratio, so it is negative, that's why. And if you had, uh, say, coefficients, you can use the same polynomial that is used to derive chlorophyll A concentration based on this band ratio. So this is. If, if suppose you just had reflectances and you wanted to derive chlorophyll A concentration, you can use already derived algorithm, take the band ratio and use the algorithm coefficients to get chlorophyll A concentration. So you can also, if you have different um, images, then you can co-locate and do subtraction of two images to see how chlorophyll A is changing in time, say. So there are multiple use of this uh, particular feature uh, in math uh, band. So you can explore that. When you do this exercise for um, Lake Victoria, you are going to follow the same step and see how things change. Um, and you can also see how, uh, if you look at chlorophyll and band ratio, you can see how low and higher values do correspond to change in this uh, band ratio values. Uh, so that's basically how you do band math. And so next week, what we are going to do is go a little further and we're going to see how to use this uh, software installation for um, getting from level 1 to level 2. And then we are going to do some Landsat image analysis. So this is a demonstration of how to search and download Landsat images. And for that, we're going to use Earth Explorer USGS site shown here. Now, as we saw earlier, ocean color data are available for MODIS and VIRS ready-made from the ocean color website. So we not only have surface reflectances, but we also have derived products such as chlorophyll A concentration, which you have downloaded and you're going to analyze by using CDAS. If we want to do the same with Landsat data, they are not readily available in Ocean Color Web. And so what we have to do is pick a region of interest, download 
available Landsat images and then convert them to ocean color products. It is possible to do this using a software in CDAS, but we have to start with level one Landsat data, convert them to level two data, and then work with them in CDAS. So we're going to demonstrate this next week when we process Landsat data, how we are going to find level two data which are atmospherically corrected, level one data, and then you also have surface reflectances and DRAR products such as chlorophyll A concentration. So this today, what we're going to focus on is just how to get Landsat images, and then we can process these images next week. So as you can see here, this site does require registration. If you don't have a registration on this site, you have to set up it by clicking on this link. Once you register though, uh, and you have a username and password, you can download this data for free. You can see this map that allows you to pick and pan different regions. If you look at the left hand side, here is what the selection criteria are for searching Landsat and other images. You can have different data sets as we will see and then search criteria. You can have multiple options here. Either you can choose particular address or place by path and row or by features or US and world features. Or you can quickly just use this map and look at the area of your interest. So we are going to focus here. I'm going to use Lake Victoria again as an example. This is going to be our case study. So you can pick coordinates. If you want to see coordinates, I'm picking decimal. You can have degree minute second if you like. Once you have zoomed into the map and you know the area of your interest, you just have to click and have a polygon that covers the area of your interest. And that uh, that it, these coordinates appear in this window here. You can even uh, change your polygon if you like uh, by deleting and re-entering the points here. So once you pick this, all Landsat images that cover this polygon can be searched and downloaded. Here is also date range. And for example, I am going to pick July and August of this year, but you can pick uh, any year that Landsat data are available for. And as we will see, uh, all the data from Landsat 4 or 5 onwards you can download from here. So this is the date range that we have picked. And or you can just select a particular month from here if you like, or you have all months, but you can pick a particular date range also. Once you do that, you can pick data sets because this site has just not Landsat data, but other sensors are there too. As you can see, AVHRR data are there. There are some commercial data available like Iconos and OrbView. Uh, spot data are available also. Um, EO1, which is a past mission, um, and Sentinel-2 MSI data available here. Here we are going to focus on Landsat data. So you click on the Landsat and you can see that uh, Landsat collection level one data are available here. There are level two data here also. We're going to start with level one data. Once you pick level one data, you will see that there's let's say eight, seven, four, five, and then one to five. We're going to pick Landsat eight, OLI and thermal IR data level one. There are additional criteria that you can read manual on Landsat data collection. Uh, you can find this in the chat box, the website, which describes each and every option. So these are the world reference system path and rows which describe each Landsat uh, image. Uh, you can pick by that. You can pick images by particular cloud cover criteria. And you can have different types such as uh, day and night. You can have either one sensor or multiple sensors, and you can have either tier one, tier two, or real-time data. Again, the manual describes them in great detail, 
but tier one is the one we generally have because they are regiometrically uh, calibrated data and, and geographically and geometrically. So we can use all for now. So you can keep all the default criteria and then you can look for results. Once you search for results, it comes up with lists of all the images that cover this polygon for the date range that we picked. And once you have all the images, you can click on this footprint and it shows which area it's covering. Here, not much of the lake is available, but you can see that this particular one has some area covered. And this one too. So you can, once you know by clicking on the footprint, you can pick which images you want to download. Either you can do bulk download and then add to the cart and download them at the same time. Or as you keep finding them, you can download by clicking here. When you click here, you will get a list of different products. And what you want to download is the level one GeoTIFF data product. You can click on download and save on your computer. I have already saved some of these images and we will be sharing these images with you uh, so that you can analyze them next week. But this quick uh, demonstration was just to show you how to use Earth Explorer and get the data, Landsat level one data for analysis. So I'm going to stop this demonstration here. You can continue to work with your CDAS exercise now. And we will use this data, similar Landsat data, uh, next week when we demonstrate how to use these level 1 images to convert to level 2 images using CDAS. For now, uh, we're going to stop here and then you can do the exercise using CDAS that you downloaded on your computer using the Lake Victoria ocean color data that you downloaded from ocean color. So here is the CDAS window 7.5.1. You must have uh, downloaded this and installed on your computer. And in the handout section, you have exercise for using CDAS to visualize MODIS ocean color data or Lake Victoria that you downloaded from Ocean Color Web last week. Hopefully all of you were able to download and install CDAS. If not, you still have one week to catch up with it. And at the end of this exercise, we will have a question answer session. And then if you have any specific questions or if you're having any particular difficulty, we can discuss that as well. So here is the exercise that you have on the handout section and also available from our set website. So I am also going to walk through this with you, but we'll give you a few minutes to catch up and get here so that you can navigate to where CDAS is on your computer and open it. Also, get familiar with some of the steps that are listed here that you will be doing. This is the file you downloaded. We downloaded last week for Lake Victoria using the Ocean Color Web. You must have that file saved on your computer. So once you open CDAS, that is the file you will have to navigate and open using either file open or by using this. I have this file saved on my computer and I'm just going to open it. Once you open it, you will see 
all the information. You can click on rasters. And then you can explore different variables or just go right to chlorophyll A concentration. Here is Lake Victoria. Here's the mask manager. And as we did, we can pick land mask. We can also put grid lines. And now I'm going to wait for everyone to uh, indicate that they have reached the step. And you can zoom in. So once you navigate through all that, open CDAS, open the file, look at the rasters, click on the chlorophyll A concentration, and you will get this image. So once you are here, then you can uh, work with different colors. So here is the color manager. And again, you can try to see different colors if you like. Try and get the gradient. And you can look at the table. You can see that most of these chlorophyll values are in this range. And when you move your cursor here, you can see the values. This is in 20s up to 30. As you go down, it's about 3 here. Something else you see is this white region here. So you can see. If you can see mask manager and go to, you can change this color just to see where there are clouds. Here's where all the clouds are, just highlight them. That's why we don't see any data here. We've repeatedly talked about this that any optical sensor. This is one of the limitations that if there are clouds present, you will not be able to see the surface. So clearly where the data are missing, so many of them are actually because of clouds. And it will give you a few more minutes to add this color bar, if you like, to the image before going further. OK. 
here it says 0 0.1 to 60. You can try that. You can follow the PowerPoint. So you can try and pick different colors and see how they look. There is a way to customize your colors also. And if you go on CEDA's website, you will see a tutorial um, for these features. Also, how to work with layer manager. That tutorial is available. There's a video there. So you can add color bar as shown in these steps. Here are the values. You can pick your options and create layer. So here's the color bar you can see. You can zoom out. So this feature, this navigation control, that helps in actually picking the window you like easily. So I know there is a feature that helps you reset your original view. This reset to default layout will get you back to where you were from you. You can say reset to default layout, and then you can go back to where you started. So as we this slide that just tells you to do to explore chlorophyll values and you've already done so. So here are higher values. As high as this is this particular one is more like 85. So you can see that there are spots where there is much higher chlorophyll concentration. 
uh, we have not uh, we did not include surface temperature in this particular exercise but you have downloaded surface temperature so what you can do is import that too in um, cdas and we'll give you a few minutes to do that if you wish to at the end then you you can see where there is higher temperature there is higher chlorophyll concentration there is more likelihood of algal bloom This feature also is useful because if you are working on a project and you want to save it, here is a procedure that you will follow so that you don't have to start again. If you want to uh, quit this in between, you can go back and start where you left. So basically, you can save as and you will be asked to save this as time map format and you click yes. Since I've already done so, I'm going to quit this. Now, if you want to open this file, you go to File. Session save is what? is needed here to follow the steps to enter a new name of the file that you want. And then when, so that, that's the session that you save. So whatever you have done, this project you have done, that will be saved. So go ahead and save this. So you'll be asked, you can say yes, and then it's writing. These are the exact steps. You can save the file in this format. Then you can save the session. You can say test. And you can save it. And then you can go back and session open that same file. So you can follow these steps. For now, you, you just have to make sure that you save this file. Later on, you can open it. The idea is to just show how you can save your work. So it's a long project or you want to go back and change things, you can start where you left. So actually what we will do is in the demonstration, you saw that you can crop any small region by geographical area by using crop, raster crop. And you can add coordinates or pixels and pick a small box. 
for just learning what here what we're doing is sort of just picking to zoom in to this entire lake region and then do the statistics as the instruction says So this is the window that you zoom into. When you crop, that will be the window that will be cropped. And once you crop it, this is the raster. You will see a new raster here. And once you go to that, so this is the original. This is the cropped one. You can put grid lines on that too. And so the crop layer is the one that you want to do statistics on. Actually, what we're going to do is next few steps, you can just follow once you crop. Um, because your homework is based on the statistics, we encourage you to do it now. So go to the use the statistics and also the histogram if you pick a smaller window you will have um, different numbers and histograms will pretty much look the same if you pick like small region your statistics and histograms of course will change um, depending on how you have cropped, numbers might change a little bit, but still um, basically keep the entire lake in your cropped window and do the statistics and histogram and answer the questions best you can in your homework. So we'll give you a few minutes to catch up here, maybe 10 or 15 minutes so that you, all of you can Play with these crop features. You can even go ahead and do the small cropping. For your homework, though, keep the entire lake in your cropped window and do the statistics. Also, please uh, try to save this session so later on when you're answering your homework questions, you can go back and look at the values and um, visualization if you like. So I'm now actually going to mute and stop and let you catch up. So homework one and two, both are available on our web page. These are Google Form links. You will be answering questions using the Google Form. So please go to the website, RSET website. That's where the homeworks are. So there's also, um, I see comments about people having different images, and that is OK. Um, as long as um, you do the analysis, the whole idea behind this exercise is just to get hands-on experience working with the CDAS GUI. So if you have a different image, that's OK. Um, but last week, we did download SST image also. So we encourage you to explore that. You can import that and view that as well.
So this is the SSD that you saved and you may have a different date, but basically you can also look at that after you're done with um, chlorophyll. We're going to focus on chlorophyll, of course, but you can also look at SSD if you have time and interest in looking at it. So here we are also looking at RGB true color image. You can use either cropped image or you can go back to the original image, which is not cropped. It's your choice. This is mostly just to get familiar with CDAS. Here is where you can get RGB image. So red, green, and blue, these are the default. If you actually want a um, image that is not true color, but you want a false color image, you can change these bands around. You can use different bands just to see different information. But this is more like a this is the true color image that you will see. And you can see that on, on the, in the raster window here, once you go here, all three band reflectance values you can see. You can see where there are, <coughs> excuse me, some negative values which are not physical, I mean, uh, that may be multiple reasons. But otherwise, you can see here where there are clouds, of course, you will not have data. And you can change colors or play with this image try and make it more informative if you like. But this just shows you how you can look at true color image. And you can go back and look at individual bands also, like we did for Chesapeake Bay. You can look at blue, green bands or red band or near infrared band. If you want to see different bands, you can. You can tile all the windows horizontally or vertically as we did for Chesapeake Bay. You can see all of them when you zoom in or zoom out, you can all see.
can see them vertically if you like. So you can just keep the these two images now if you like. Now you can work with this band ratios. You can, whichever, whichever image you want to work with, either cropped or original, that is fine. This is mostly to get you hands-on experience with the band math. Hopefully all of you have been able to do the statistics and histogram. If you are done with the statistics and histogram and you have saved the session, you can start with this mathematical operation. So next week we will have Africa Flores showing in more detail um, how you can use these band ratios and also in situ data to derive to be able to derive your own algorithm if you want to but for today we can just focus on learning how to use these operations So you can open it. Go to edit expression. And you want to find this log 10 function. And this is, we're following what ocean color algorithm does. It's a, we talked last week, it's a fourth order polynomial in this band ratio of blue and green band reflectances. So that is why we are doing the same, but you can use this to do any mathematical operations you see here. If you have different data, you can definitely use this if you have raster data. So you can pick appropriate reflectances here. As you can see, the here's the instruction. Just follow the PowerPoint. 
So this is the expression you actually want on, on your mathematical operation. And as we saw last time, we have, say, Weir's data or Oli data. Uh, they may not be exact uh, same wavelength, but closer to blue, these wavelengths like blue and green, these ratios are commonly used to get chlorophyll concentration. So once you go through the operation, you will see this band ratio here. This is log 10, and you can just add colors. You can add landmask. You can go through the whole analysis. When you move here, you will be able to see what the band ratio is. Log 10 of band ratio, actually. Here are the spots where we did see higher chlorophyll concentration. Again, we will have a brief uh, review next week that if you have in situ data in a particular format, you can write it and then get it into CDAS and then compare with what you have from satellite. That is possible. So if you have in situ data for different days, you can have co-located satellite images as much as possible, or you can give a window, plus or minus one day, if there's no exact overpass available. You can get the band ratios. You can save them. And then use the in situ data and the imagery from which you can average band ratio values around your in situ measurements and then derive a regression or statistical relationship between satellite and in situ data. And you can use those coefficients then everywhere, wherever you have satellite data available. So that just tells you what you can do. If you have these band ratios and you have in situ data in the area of your interest, how can you derive your own algorithm? And we'll see this in a little more detail next week. So we'll, we'll still wait for a few more minutes and see um, that everybody does the mathematical operation that we just did. And here are the uh, questions that you will be answering using Google Form. Hopefully, all of you have been able to go to this point where you can do mathematical operations using different reflectances. So we actually focused on a small subset of features that are available in CDAS. But you can go through the documentation and tutorials online also to see what additional features are there, how you can customize visualization even more. But the idea here was to, to guide you through how to look at level two data using CDAS, which are already there. And then next week, we'll go one step more advanced that will start with level one data 
We'll convert that to level two data. This is, we'll do this for Landsat. And then um, you, that also using CDAS, and then you can again visualize and do operations as we did here with MOTIS data. So we can start the question answer session soon. Okay, so the question is, can you review the difference between level one, two, and three? So we talked about this uh, last week. Um, level one data are the raw satellite data. They're how satellite measures. When you go to level two, they are actually uh, geophysical parameters derived from satellite data. They are geolocated also. They're still on the satellite swath and pixel resolution. Those are level two data that we looked at uh, from ocean color data that we use CDAS to see today that you downloaded from ocean color web last week. Level three data are the uniformly graded data based on level two data. So they're more composite in space time sometimes, sometimes just space, the spatial uh, binning. It's done so that you have um, regularly graded data. We saw that using Giovanni last week. Those data uh, were four kilometer grids, as we saw. So these are the differences. So level two, they are geophysical data, but they are geolocated. They are in swath and pixel resolution that the satellite provides. And then level three has uh, most lower resolution compared to level two. They are uniformly graded. They are binned. They are composite data. So both have their limitations and advantages. Uh, level two, of course, are the data that you get directly as satellite sees. They're converted to geophysical parameter. Level three is easy to use because it's just uniformly graded. So if you want to compare with modeling data or you know they're just easy to visualize also and uh, handle with different software if you go on ocean color website um, then there is a if you go to uh, documentation this was pointed out last week if you go to documentation uh, products, there's the first link is to level one, two, and three definitions. We went over this last week, but you can go back and review on the Ocean Color Web. Go to Docs, Products, and the first, uh, be just below the products, there's the first link is to level one, two, and three definitions. So um, does CDAS feature atmospheric correction for Sentinel 2A to B MSI? And um, Daniel, if you're here, maybe you want to take over and answer this question. Hi, Amita, this is Africa. Yes. Yeah, just in case uh, Daniel uh, is now here. Yeah. I can provide uh, some uh, Please do. feedback on, on this. Uh, he may be a mute and he can chime. Please, Daniel, feel free to chime in at any time. Um, what I understand is that uh, there is atmospheric correction for Sentinel 2, but in the command line uh, of CDAS. Uh, in the GUI, there is not, but Daniel can expand more on that. So, so there it is, but only on the command line. So all chiefs, uh, Sentinel-3 also, I think, is available through command line. I'm not sure about Sentinel-2. So we'll, um, as you say, not in GUI, they're not available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can definitely do atmospheric correction in CDAS. So whether 
that, that should be supported in Sentinel 2, but I just don't want to commit to that because I don't know what's Sentinel 2. Yes. So that I know that for Olchi, definitely GUI doesn't work. You have to have it through command line. And as Africa said, that may be true for Sentinel um, 2 also, and we will check on that. Yeah, probably the GUI doesn't work for Sentinel 2, but I don't know for sure. Definitely not for Olchi. Right. So the next question, um, again, Daniel, is about uh, coastlines. Like Louisiana are very dynamic. How current are the coastline masks available in the software? And how detailed they are? I know that the different resolutions are available, right? Yeah, I can't remember where the sources were, but there's uh, one kilometer that comes with CDAS, and then there's a, a 50 meter and 150 meter that you can install from within CDAS. I can't remember where we get those from. They're, yeah. they're basically, basically land masks that we then create coastlines around. So I don't have memorized where they come from. No, but that documentation is there. And you go on CDAS. We saw how to install that. We saw that link. Yeah, that's within the, the coastlines where you click on the Italy boot and then inside there, if you select the 50 meter 150, it's grayed out, but then it gives you the option to install it and it'll install on your machine. We didn't have it installed by default because it's very large and you know, we wanted CDAS to be small. So things like this extra data we um, have in, you install from within CDAS if you need it. So the next and how question. often are those coastlines coast lines, uh, updated? I don't, we don't update them ever. I mean, they come from an external source. I don't know that they're ever updated unless the earth changes. I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I have to see where they're coming from. But at 50 meters, I can't imagine they're changing that quickly. But they're not coastlines, they're uh, land. It's basically areas of the water to determine whether it's land and, and um, water. And then CDAS can make a coastline based on knowing whether it's land and water to draw on the edge of it. But when you're running level two gen itself, you not don't have access to that. That's as Sean has answered in one of the forum posts, that's a lower resolution. I think it's 500 meter. Which atmospheric algorithm is used? How do we do that in CDAS graphically? So uh, you're talking about atmospheric correction, I believe. So the algorithm, the link was provided last week. This is the ocean color um, processing, biological processing group that uses um, atmospheric correction. That um, link was provided in week one when we talked about atmospheric correction. And um, so Moody's and Weir's data, we saw they are corrected and then we have level two data. Um, next week when we look at Landsat data, you can use this algorithm it, uh, to generate level two data. So that, that is available through CDAS uh, GUI. You have to install that software, and um, we'll see that next week. But yes, that is possible at, for a few sensors. So you will not be able to do that for old Chi, say, um, using GUI. But you have this algorithm available. And as we talked last week, there are other atmospheric correction algorithms available too. Uh, so you can use any of them in command line or in different software. OK, so there is a question here. How do we estimate chlorophyll value uh, at the pixel that's missing? So obviously, from satellite, that data are not available either because of clouds or because of algorithm failure. For whatever reason, if you don't see chlorophyll uh, value, the best perhaps you can do is you can interpolate from surrounding pixels 
and that's a, that would be an estimation or more like a guesswork that okay uh, you you can do bilinear in, interpolation but that's that's all you can do if there are missing or, data or, or, or you can or you can either change the algorithm or adjust your thresholds which are throwing away your data um, the, the data is missing either because it's missing or because it wasn't considered um, to meet our quality criteria so you can adjust the masking thresholds and what gets masked out um, things like that you can also even adjust it's a little more bold but you could adjust so that the earth no longer has any land and if you treat the entire world as an ocean then you get a lot more retrieval results and then you subsequently would have to mask out the land and then but then you wouldn't have any of these uh, coastal um, removal so anything you do outside of the norm is is um, definitely okay for uh, imagery but can be a little um, you know worrisome if you want to talk about science quality data So next question is about where to get Victoria, Lake Victoria surface temperature, and it's the Ocean Color Web. It's the same place where you downloaded chlorophyll concentration data. There was a file there that is SST. We downloaded that too. If you go to exercise one for ocean color, you will see. Um, and so wherever you got that chlorophyll A concentration file, in that list, SST is there too. So question seven is about changing um, color, I guess, the value uh, in the range. And as you saw, it worked for us, so I'm not sure. Um, if you're trying to get the color bar, every time you get the color bar, I think, I mean, every time you change the values, you have to redo it. So you can try that again. Okay, and uh, for the histogram, there is a, a reset button on top. You go to, if you go to the PowerPoint, you will see uh, there's, there's a refresh or reset button that you have to press, and then you will see the um, histogram. Also note, you can make histograms in that statistics tool as well. OK. So that's a, a newer thing. So you may not need the histogram tool. It's an older one, but it still may have something not available in the new one. But the new one is pretty uh, uh, refined and has mm -hmm. histograms in it. So here, the question is, what's the reason to take log of band ratio? Um, so only specifically here, this was to just follow the algorithm that um, Ocean Color Group uses. And there was a review article provided last week where different algorithms are used, different band combinations are used for different parameters. For chlorophyll A concentration, it is usually blue-green band ratios and uh, log of that that is used. So the algorithm uses log 10 of band ratio polynomial in that quantity. That's why we use that. But as I mentioned, there are so many other operations. You can, you can use math operations if, if you want to. Here, this was such an example following the ocean color algorithm. So in question nine, uh, is the computed histogram based on the viewed area or on the image extent? So once you crop the image and you have this view area, if you crop to that, so on CDAS, if you look at in the central window on the left-hand side, all the rasters you can see. Whichever rasters you highlight on, that's the highlight, that's the raster that is used. 
So if you highlight the original image, the origin or entire image is used. If you highlight the cropped image, that that's the one that's used. I'd like to add that in uh, um, his, both histogram and statistics, you can mask, so you can um, you don't have to actually crop. Um, you can okay. take your original one, and within the histogram tool, there's like a ROI, region of interest, masking. So you can select mm -hmm. masking. You can select. You could have drawn a vector square on your image, and then select that vector square as your um, region of interest. Um, in the more advanced uh, statistics, the little sigma. Uh, as the icon, that one you can do a lot of masking. You could essentially say, I want it in my square, and then I want it to be not land, and I want it to be water depth of, you know, a certain range. So there's a lot of um, masking you can do to do the histogram on just the, you know, the uh, mask data. So for Chesapeake Bay, we did pick a small region by drawing a square. So you can do that. Um, but as Daniel said, I think these features where you can mask according to water depth, I mean, these are all very useful features for getting statistics. Correct. For, for Chesapeake Bay, the best way would be to draw a polygon around the bay. and and that extends into the land and then then it's uh then you just do where it's uh in the polygon and then not land and then you get a nice uh, shape of the chesapeake bay yeah so provided question. you use the 50 meter uh, land mask of course So question 10 is about homework, um, and it says that what you mean by um, units of chlorophyll concentration, that clearly it's asking for what units are they? What are the units of chlorophyll concentration values that you see? And we have talked about again and again, but just to make sure that you know where to look for it. And peak in histograms is it's not the highest peak value. In general, if you see the histogram, you will see there are how many uh, how many clear clusters are there. If you say, then then there is a peak in between that cluster. So that's what we're looking for. If you are using different image than what we looked at here, that's fine. You can just this is just to be able to do all these operations and look at the data. Okay, we already answered that about taking log. So uh, the question here is that, uh, you know, in, near the coast, is chlorophyll coming from tree growing or vegetation growing, or it's because of algae? And so that, um, if it is, if the Pixels are clearly in the water. That's what you want to make sure then they are chlorophyll pixels. Then contamination near coast. Yes, of course, that's an issue. Depending on the special resolution of the sensor that you're using. That's why uh, really if you look at where the pixel is clearly in the water, you can have um, probability of that being just water chlorophyll because of algae that's high and not you're not looking at other vegetation so i see a question about homework one the uh, there's a second part which was asked but it's not in the google form that's okay you can just post for your it's not in the google form that's okay you just answer the questions which are there in the homework form Um, if you are using the same file, I'm not sure why you are getting different results. For statistics, it may be the cropping that you do. 
it's slightly different and that's why you're getting different numbers. But if you are downloading the same file, then I'm not sure why it should look any different visually. But statistics, of course, will depend on how you're cropping or, you know, it, that, that can change a little bit. Next week, then, we will um, look at some more analysis. We look at Lancet, example of Lancet analysis, and then Africa will also demonstrate how to use in situ data along with satellite data to do some more analysis. And we want to thank Daniel Knowles for joining today and his comments and his helpful question and answer session. Thanks, Daniel, for your sure. time. And Africa, thank you also. And we'll, with that, we'll end today's session. And thank you all for joining. And please continue to work on your exercises if you haven't completed them. And complete the homework assignments also. Again, to repeat, if you don't have exactly the same image, if you haven't cropped exactly the same way, you may not get exact numbers. But whatever you get, you do um, do that in your homework question answer session put that in your answers thanks everyone and we will see you next week at the same time